All right, welcome to lab 10. This is all about square roots like promised. So get the code, it has all these files, and what do you know? We're using a make file now. Let's get started. So what you're gonna be working on for the most part is square root.cpp. So square root.h is where it's defined, but uh, square root.cpp is where it's implemented. So there are two functions that you're gonna be caring about here, a prox equal and square root. You'll be using a prox equal inside of the implementation for square root. And then here's the CPP file. Let's talk about them. So you'll be implementing both of those functions. A prox equal is not hard, right? It's like what we've talked about in lecture before. It just uh, should return true. It takes two numbers and tries to compare them, two doubles, and returns true if they are close, if they're pretty much equal, okay? So this function should return true if the numbers are within 0 0.000001 of each other, okay? So you're gonna have to do some subtraction, some absolute values, that's what CMath is for, and give back true if they're within that range, they're practically equal, and false otherwise, so that's a prox equal. And then the main work that you'll be doing is in the square root function. You get a number and you calculate the square root of that x and you give back that square root, okay? So here's what you do, just like what we were talking about in class. So you're gonna make guesses until your guess becomes a prox equal to the square root. That's how it's gonna work. So you're gonna keep getting closer and closer because you're gonna hone in on the correct value. You're always going to have your search space and eventually your search space is going to be so small that you are within 0 0.000001 of the right answer and that's when you give back that answer. All right. Uh, one extra thing though is if uh, the user tries to ask for the square root of some number less than zero because you can't take square roots of numbers less than zero, uh, you should throw a runtime error. You can give any string but you have to throw a runtime error. Okay. You can put any string inside of that runtime error, but you have to throw one. Otherwise, calculate that double and give it back. Okay? So, uh, yeah, as you start, read the, go back to the lecture and read this uh, explanation some more. But as you start, what you need to do is make a guess. Like your low part, your, uh, your guess of how small the square root could possibly be is always zero, right? Your search space should have a lower limit of zero and an upper limit of max of 1 in x, okay? So for example, if you're trying to calculate the square root of 5, you know it's always going to be between 0 and 5. So that's your upper limit and lower limit. And then you can search and eventually find the correct square root of 5, okay? So keep that in mind. That's how you want to start. And then repeatedly you're going to calculate the midpoint in between your low and high range. And you'll see if that was a good enough guess for the square root. Okay, eventually it will become the proper square root with enough changing of the high and low limits. All right, so yeah, read all this. And here is probably the most helpful thing I can give you. Let me show you how your algorithm should work as, uh, let's pretend you're given uh, x being nine. You wanna calculate the square root of nine using this algorithm. So here's what you do. You start your lower limit at zero, your upper limit at nine, your high and low, because you know that the square root of nine is somewhere between zero and nine, and you calculate the midpoint of that. Okay, that's 4.5. And then you square that, and you get a number, and you compare that to what you're trying to take the square root of. So we wanted the square root of nine, so if mid were the real square root, uh, if it were a good enough guess for the square root of nine, its squared would be nine but no, this one's way too big, so we better guess lower. That means our upper limit was too big. So we'll make that mid, because the right answer, now we know, uh, the square root of nine, wherever it is, it's between zero and 4.5. So then we come back to our loop. Our lower limit is zero, now our upper limit is 4.5. We guess the midpoint of that, which is 2.25. We square it, compare it to nine. Oh no, this was too low. That means our lower limit was too low. So we should guess between 2.25, because we know it's bigger than that, and 4.5 still. So that's the new lower limit and upper limit. You see how one, one changes and the other stays the same, just like for our binary search. Okay, so you keep on trying, 
and you keep on having the space between where you think that square root is, iteration four, iteration five. You keep on calculating the midpoint, squaring it, seeing how close you are, and look how we're getting, like we're shooting a little bit above and a little bit below nine. We're getting closer though, getting closer to nine, and that means the mid itself was being close to the square root of nine. Okay, we're getting super close, super close, super close. You keep on having your search space, your lower limit and your upper limit gets really close to three. And eventually with enough iterations, it looks like it's gonna take 25 iterations. The lower limit's this, the upper limit's this. This is the midpoint, practically three. It's within this much of three, right? And it ends up being within that much of nine. That's the whole point. So this mid squared is, approximately equal to the original value of nine, and so we'll give back the mid as our answer for the square root of nine. It's pretty much three. So eventually that middle of your search space, when you square it, it will be approximately equal to the original value, and that's, what it, that's exactly what it means to have calculated the square root, okay? So see if you can get this working for your own uh, implementation. You're gonna have to have a loop, and you're gonna have to have some variables just like this. I get closer and closer to the square root. All right, so that is your job. And then finally, I have made some tests, okay? You can uh, run the tests immediately, right? You can say, make square root test for that. I have made you a make file. And the very first rule of square root test, so you can just say make if you wanted to as well. And that compiles everything, the only the stuff that needs to be recompiled, it's, it's wonderful and here is the test file that it is compiling. Here's some tests that, that I have made for you already, testing that your square root works for the square root of two, testing that your square root works for the square root of 0 0.5, uh, and testing to make sure that you throw an exception when the square root is smaller than zero, because that should never exist. So those are my uh, tests that I have for you. You can get those working, just run it, make sure that everything's fine. And then the last job for you for this lab is to make four more tests in this style. Maybe it'd be like, right, calculate the square root of nine again, calculate the square root of five, calculate some small numbers, calculate some negative numbers again, but get four tests uh, also passing. So seven total, and that is the end of the lab. Okay, so that is all you have to do. So get those two functions in, uh, square root dot cbp working, a proxy equal in square root, and then make four more tests in the testing file and get those passing. And so because those are the two files you're working in, those are the two files you will submit, and that is all you do, okay? So that's everything that I have for you here. That is your lab 10. Good luck and ask me lots of questions about it and I'll see you in the next lecture.